Hey y'all, uh, here's a quick warm up for your pole training. To start, we're gonna start with our head looking up and down about eight times, not forgetting to breathe. From here, we can go into looking side to side about eight times, still remembering to breathe. Trying to warm up our neck, getting ready for this workout. After side to side, you can go ear to shoulder, side to side, about eight times. Still remembering to breathe, of course, really waking up this neck. And when you're done with that, head comes to center and rotate in any direction about four times. Still breathing, of course, and then reverse for another four times. When you're done with your neck, we can go to our shoulders, going into alternating rotations backwards about eight times or so, still breathing, and then you can reverse the direction for another eight times or so, really trying to wake up our shoulders for everything we're about to do. Then your arms can come up to the side, one palm up, one palm down, and begin to flip, rotating your shoulders, still breathing about eight times or so. Once you've had enough of that, stop with one palm up, one palm down, and flex those wrists and point them and give those wrists a nice workout. Do a couple sets of those, flip them, and then do it again. Then you can bend your elbows to a 90 degree angle and try to rotate those elbows. See if you can reverse yourself without messing it up getting those elbows really working. And now we're moving from our shoulders to our chest and upper spine. I like to inhale, pull my shoulders back, kind of arch, then exhale and roll them forward, tuck my chin to chest. Give it about eight times or so, whatever your upper body needs. I turn to the side so you can see me. Now I'm coming back for some hips side to sides to get those hips working. Add some flavor and maybe add some figure eights. And if you really want to give yourself a good workout and mess yourself up, bring your hands to your hips and add your upper body with those hips. You may look like a mess, but it'll make you feel good waking it all up. It's like a standing cat and cow. Get some in both directions, still breathing. After working on some joint mobility, I like to kind of go into a flow sequence. So on your inhale, bring both arms up. Exhale, squat and hands to chest. Repeat this about six to eight times on the same breath. Once you're done with the set, you're going to come and stop in your squat position and pulse. Feeling those legs and hips work, wake up. From here, I like to grab onto my ankles to wake up my knees and hips some more. I come into a squat position and then straighten them and fold forward. I repeat this about six times, six to eight times, of course. This is part of my flow. Really get all the muscles going. When I'm done, I then come to a squat position, hands to my knees, and alternating twists to really wake up my spine some more, my shoulders, open up those legs a little more. Fold into it, little pulse, really trying to wake everything up. Hands come to center, one arm comes up, rotate the wrist, reverse it, and then bring it down. Other side comes up, putting you in a nice twist, rotate the wrist, reverse it, really trying to wake everything up. Bring that hand down, pulse a little bit more, and then you can come into some side to side lunges. We're really trying to wake up those hips, those hip flexors, quads, hamstrings, glutes, all of it. <laughs> nice active stretching for wide splits, etc. Give yourself about eight of those. Come to center and roll back up, feeling every vertebrae. You can then bring one arm up into the side, exhaling to a side stretch. Then come to a flat back if you can and then fold into that leg breathing the whole time walk your hands over to the other side fold into it try to come to a flat back with the opposite arm and then twist your torso bring it back up to an alternate side stretch from here we're going to step at the bottom or top of our mat 
and inhale both arms come up exhale you're gonna fold at the hips if you're at the bottom you're gonna walk your hands up if you're at the top you're gonna walk your feet back into a downward dog if your heels are touching breathe there if not alternate the bend in your knees to try to get your heels closer to the ground hold this downward dog breathe when you're ready come to a plank position maybe hold it for a moment abs tight and contracted muscles engaged then come down to your knees once you're on your knees we're going to go into our cat and cow poses on the inhale we arch our back chin to sky like someone stepped on it exhale tuck it tuck the pelvis chin to sky a uh, chin to chest like if someone punched you Give yourself a set of six to eight, and then from there you go into the disco cat and cow rotations, or disco cat and cow, or cat and cow rotations, however you like to call them. Give yourself about four to six each side, while not forgetting to breathe, of course. From here, push back into a child's pose and breathe for a breath or two, or as long as you need. Have your moment. Curl your toes underneath, push yourself back up to a downward dog. Alternate the bend in your knees if your heels are not touching to bring them closer. If your heels are, hold the pose. Then bring your right leg up, giving it a pulse. Really trying to wake it up. Some active stretching. Try to keep your hips squared. It's hard. I had to fix mine. And then walk or swing that foot to the front of the mat to the outside of that same hand. Give yourself some gentle pulses. Externally, internally rotate that leg and open it up. We're trying to wake up our hips and growing quads, hamstrings, and glutes. Give yourself some pulses to make the front leg straight and then come into a deep lunge. When you're ready, try to come to your forearms and breathe for a couple breaths, really waking it up. Have your moment. When you're done, come up, push onto your hands. Walk your feet in between your hands, and then you're coming into deep lunges and front leg extensions. Really trying to deepen that lunge and extend that front leg and fold into it. This is a great active stretch to get your front splits. Give yourself six to eight breathing, then come to a deep lunge holding that pose, maybe a little pose, and then pull your hips back to straighten the front leg. Give your ankle a rotate, feel the muscles working. And then fold into that leg and breathe. Have your moment. When you're ready, bring your hands back to the other side. Swing that leg to the side and push yourself back to a child's pose and breathe for a couple of breaths and have a moment. Then curl your toes underneath and push your hips back up to a downward dog. Alternate the bend in your knees to either bring your heels to touch the ground or hold the downward dog. Then we're going to switch legs, bring it up, squeeze in the glute, gently pulse again, trying to find your hips staying straight and facing forward. Give yourself a couple reps and then swing or walk that foot to the front of the mat on the outside of that same hand. Again, going into those pulses and the internal external rotation of the leg to open up that hip growing and all of that goodness. Yes, really get in there. Don't forget to breathe. We want to get our other side. Then we come into the deep lunge and come to our forearms and breathe and have a moment trying to open it up with this static stretch. And then when you're done with that, you can come up to your hands, push back up, bring the leg in between your hands to the center and go into your deep lunge of front leg extension again. Keep breathing, give yourself about six to eight reps, really trying to deepen that lunge and pull your hips back and straighten that leg. This is a great stretch for your front splits again. When you're ready, come to a deep lunge, hold it, really bring, try to bring that hip closer to the ground, and then pull your hips back, straighten that leg, rotate the ankle. Give it a couple times, and then reverse rotation, feel the muscles and how they're working, and then fold into that front leg, straight and breathe. Hand comes to the other side, and then swing that leg back, pushing yourself back to another child's pose. Breathing here for a couple breaths, having a moment. Position yourself, find yourself, curl your toes underneath, push your hips back to a downward dog. If your heels aren't touching, alternate the bend in your knees. We're doing some conditioning. Pull your hands a little closer, elbows to your side. Give yourself some press-ups to get those shoulders working and those biceps and triceps and get them ready for everything that's about to go down and pull or your calisthenic training. Then come out to your pull. I like to give myself some shoulder push-ups, so pulling those shoulders back and then pushing them away from the ground. 
Come back to your knees, push back to a child's pose for another moment for you to breathe and just collect yourself. Bring your hips forward, come into kind of a plank position and get ready for some mountain climbers to bring your heart rate and body temperature up with some cardio and conditioning. Excellent. Coming down to a downward dog, stretch it out and then bring your hips down to the floor for an upward dog to stretch it out. From there, if you like, go to a child's pose, have a moment. If not, we're coming, we're changing our position on the mat and then coming to a sitting position, one leg bent, one leg straight. Give yourself a side stretch and breathe. Then twist your torso, chin to knee and stretch and breathe into that. And then swing yourself around, opposite hand coming to the ground and arch back to stretch your abs coming to the knee. You switch legs, now opposite leg is bent, you're going to inhale, take that opposite arm and give yourself a side stretch, really breathing, trying to wake it up in the static hold. When you're ready, you can twist your torso and fold into the leg, trying to bring your chin to knee, breathe here, have your moment. And then from there, you can swing yourself around, coming to your opposite hand and opposite knee, arch your back, give yourself a nice stretch on the abs and then that front. Coming back to a seated position again, you can open your legs wide in a straddle position. Hands come to center and rotate, really waking up the growing hip flexors, hip adductors, abductors, all of it. Reverse the direction, really trying to get some active stretching in, get you ready for this workout. And then if you like, you can go into some side stretches in this wide um, split angle. Breathe here, twist into it, fold again. This will feel very different with both legs open. Walk your hands around to the other side, fold into that leg, breathe for a moment. And when you've had enough of that, twist your body into another side stretch and breathe. Having your moment, open it up, maybe flex your toes a little. And then you can come forward, flex your toes, point your feet. I like to internally, externally rotate my hips to get me to work on getting me into a pancake and help widen the splits. This is up to you. This flexibility will come with time. It is very hard, um, but have your moment, breathe into it. And then when you're ready, come up, bend your legs, pull them to center and internally rotate your hips, trying to bring your knee to touch the ground. And you'll feel this on the outside of your leg, throwing it all away, all the splits we just try to do, stretching, rotate your ankles, Getting ready for the finale, reverse the direction, point and flex the feet, feel how your muscles work differently, and then keep them pointed, internally, externally rotate again and feel how the muscles work. This is important for leg hangs and different things like that. And then flex the feet and internally rotate the legs and feel the difference. It'll feel very different. Shake it off. Coming back up when you're done and you made it. Thank you.